and welcome to the Story Behind the Stories, your weekly look at the pages of the Nipawa Banner and Press. Thank you very much for taking a little bit of your time to spend with us. I'm Owen Devereaux, a news and sports reporter with the Banner and Press. Joining me this week, Casper Wehrhahn, a news reporter as well with the Nipawa Banner and Press. Casper? Yes, happy to be here and we have some good stories to talk about this week and thankfully they're not all sad and not necessarily about COVID, maybe just a smidge, but they're, they're quite positive. It's a nice change of pace, quite honestly, um, to be able to start things off with a little bit of positivity. And you brought the positivity this week, Casper. This is a story that I, I, I am very surprised and, and glad to sort of be able to, to, be able to talk to you about. Uh, local helping local. I loved the headline, first off. I, I, I definitely love the headline on that, but give us a little more on, on what it actually means. Uh, well, again, with the headline, this really, that's just the essence of it. And, you know, that's probably the easiest I've come up with a headline my entire time working here. Um, but the, the essence of the story, really, it's about a local business, uh, Rob Smith & Son Backhoe, uh, which started up a draw to help other local businesses that have been impacted by uh, COVID-19, uh, whether they've just had less business or they've had to close, uh, uh, that sort of thing. And it's a story that kind of blew me away while I was gathering the info on that and writing it. Um, specifically, the idea was brought up by Andrea Smith uh, over there, the administrator there. And she was kind of just racking her brain for ideas of what they could do because with that type of business, they were lucky enough that they were able to stay open because it seemed essential. Uh, the workload might be a bit less, but they're doing okay. Um, and so the idea for this draw came up and what, uh, what happens really is people can enter and they can win a $250 uh, gift certificate for a local business that's been impacted. And after the announcement for this, it really just kind of took off. Like there, were, uh, there was a donation from a local business, uh, John's Electric, if I remember correctly. Uh, and after that, donations just kept pouring in. So they raised two th uh, $10,250 for this draw. So they're doing like seven draws each week for this like that's the thing that really blew me away is like you hear these types of stories it's like oh that's nice they'll be able to bring in a couple bucks but it just took off like a like a like a racehorse coming out the chute there and and really picked up a lot of momentum in a short amount of time oh absolutely both in donations and in just people entering their names uh andrea said that uh, you know it started with a couple names coming in and then all of a sudden it was like 526 so it really took off. This is an absolutely incredible thing that's going on. And again, hopefully, if you're watching the show, you're one of those 526 that got involved, participated in it, because it really does sound like it's a wonderful cause and, and so important at this point in time. That's the important thing. You know, it's not just local people supporting local businesses. It's local businesses supporting each other as well. And I, it's... This is great, and the best part is, as well, this isn't even the only one, really, for the area, is it? There's other off, I won't say offshoots, but sort of similar structures, similar things on the go right now, aren't there? Absolutely. There's people that got inspired by this one, and they're doing a similar thing. Uh, and there's people that are, are, you know, just had similar ideas and are doing their own sort of draws, one of which is Century 21 here in Nipwa. They're doing their own draw as well. They randomly selected... 21 different businesses in the Nipua community uh, and purchased gift cards from them, which they are giving away as well. Uh, they have uh, uh, 21 days of giveaways. I don't remember if I said the name for that, but that's what it's called. Yep. Uh, so they're giving away gift cards for 21 days until December 21st. Uh, people enter every day for a chance to win for the next day's draw. Uh, just by, you know, answering the question that they post that day. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. And the, <laughs> the last day as well has an extra treat. Uh, anyone who has entered their name gets their name saved for that final draw. 
uh, and they have a chance to win a dainty tray, so it kind of satisfies their uh, holiday sweet tooth. Oh, wow, that's nice. And the, th the best thing about that is you can, of course, read the story about uh, Rob Smith and Son on the front page and with a little bit of carryover into the paper. The Century 21 is a separate story unto itself as well that you can find on page 12 of this week's edition of the Banner and Press. And there were other ones as well that we were con also chasing down, but just sort of little bits and pieces. You, you, if I remember right, you shared a little snippet of, of one or two of the other ones, right? Uh, at the end of one of the stories, was it? Uh, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that was with the Rob Smith and Son one. Right. Uh, John's Electric was one of the ones that uh, was inspired by the Rob Smith and Son uh, initiative and sort of took up doing their own. Uh, and as well, I just want to stress that these two are just a couple of the initiatives that we saw in the area. So please do keep a lookout at uh, your local businesses, wherever you may be, see what they're doing and support it. And quite honestly as well, if you're one of these businesses that is doing something or you're affiliated with them or you're just a customer, give us a shout out. We would love to, y you know, sometimes we're a little iffy about writing stories because it can turn into a bit of a commercial. But this is an example of it where we don't mind. I don't mind this at all. Casper did a tremendous job on sort of encapsulating what they're trying to do and going beyond themselves. We love spotlighting these types of things. So if you know of any businesses, not just in Nipawa, but in our, our entire region, Carberry, Gladstone, Minidosa, wherever it may be, get in touch with us. We'd love to put the spotlight on there and help out in any way, shape, or form. Cause, and again, it helps us out as well. Because this time of year, um, everybody starts to shut down a little bit, even at the best of times during Christmas. So chasing down stories and all that gets a little difficult. So, you know, because uh, otherwise, I'm just going to be staring at the walls. <laughs> and I already do enough of that at home after work. So I'd like to be able to be a little productive at, at the job. So get in touch with us if you have any leads or any suggestions we'd love to to follow up and, and put the spotlight out there where it's richly deserved let's shift over and uh, talk a little bit about uh this week another guest column last week uh mike waddell uh ken and christine waddell's uh, son did a guest column because ken was in the hospital getting some surgery done this week, it is Christine Waddell who did a special feature. Um, I won't delve too much into it, just to give you a little bit of background, just a touch. I can had a slight complication, nothing serious, nothing, ex nothing to be extremely worried about, but a little bit of complications, had to go back into the hospital. He's, he's, as we record right now, he's back in the back right now. He's already telling us stories. We're trying to pay attention. We're, we're trying our best. Uh, but he's already back to back to Ken mode, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, so that's that's wonderful to see, quite honestly. But um, Christine explains to a degree, and, and she does say in there as well that this is Ken's story to tell. So whether he does or doesn't, it's up to him. But she she sort of shares her experiences as um, as a a person, sort of a loved one watching as another loved one tries to deal with the situation that they're in in this time of, of COVID and of fear. So um, very appreciative of Christine on giving us that type of perspective. And, and that was sort of the takeaways I took from it. What, what, what takeaways, what did you take from that, Casper? Um, honestly, not a whole lot different than, uh, than yours, myself. Um, it was... You know, it's definitely something that uh, uh, wasn't a fun time for Ken, uh, but it's good to see him back in the office that he's doing well. Uh, you know, still in recovery mode, you know, there's some tiredness after that, of course. Uh, it's only natural, you know, you're recovering from a surgery and, you know, anything else he had to deal with. Uh, but he's doing good, so that's, that's really nice to see. And, uh, you know, joking mood, of course, the first time he had to get tested for, for COVID because that's just, you know, standard procedure in the hospital. Yep. Uh, Christine sent us a, a sort of lighthearted message there saying, don't worry, he's negative. Yeah. And the thing is, that, uh, uh, four tests right now he's, he's taken. And, oh God, just when it's explained to you, you wouldn't even want to go through something like that once if you could avoid it. But going through four over like a two-week period, it's like, ah, oh God. 
Oh. Yeah, it's certainly something I hope I never have to do. Yeah. Because, uh, no, I, I don't want a cotton swab reaching through my nose to yeah. scratch my brain. <laughs> scratch the back of my, my brain. <laughs> See what's back there. Yeah. Nothing but dust. <laughs> um, it, it, actually, it brings up a very good point. Um, I, I don't normally do this with letters, but I wanted to spotlight a letter we had this week. Mm. Uh, a gentleman who sent it in, Alfred uh, Isaac from Bernie. Uh, and, and I do apologize. To, maybe I shouldn't have shared the name. Uh, maybe, but but it's, in the, it's in the paper. It's published in the paper. Read the letter. The gentleman does take the time to explain the situation. He had to deal with the uh, uh, situation with COVID, and he walks us through it. We, we, we don't really know because we don't we don't experience it. A lot of us haven't experienced the situation with COVID. He walks us through everything here and it's very, it's, it's an eye opener, quite honestly. So like I said, I don't normally spotlight letters, but this one, I hope, I sincerely hope you will read it and take something away from it. And we very much thank Mr. Isaac for, for submitting it. Um, very appreciative. There are other letters in here, and I, I, I don't mean to disrespect the other letters because they were great. There's a couple other letters in there, but this is one of those one-offs that maybe, you know, definitely, you know, turn your attention to when you have the opportunity. Speaking of turning attention, let's turn attention over to uh, some construction work going on. Even though a lot of things in Nipawa and in Manitoba are closed uh, due to being deemed non-essential, Construction uh, is essential, and uh, construction is ongoing for Kinsman Courts 2, that project just a little down the road from the NACTV studio. Uh, the uh, senior housing complex is going up. We had a front page story on it uh, back in uh, summer, and we're doing a follow-up on that right now. We're almost halfway through, maybe a little less than halfway through the process. It's really coming together. I had an opportunity to speak with Grant Lucan on how things are playing out and how they feel about uh, how they're playing out. They're quite happy with the construction. Weather, though, has been <laughs> pretty darn helpful on that. I mean, this is a really unusual winter that we've been having so far in that we haven't had winter. <laughs> um, so that's really helped them to sort of stay on schedule. And it's looking good for them moving ahead. Um, he also talks with me about the application process for those interested uh, in perhaps uh, purchasing uh, an apartment complex or, or a condo complex. I'm not quite sure the exact wording I should use there, but um, it's a first come first serve basis. You can get the applications at the credit union, Stride Credit Union in Nipawa or on their website. And he did say, you know what? we're." We're going to do this from a first come, first serve. If you put in your application today and somebody puts in an application tomorrow, you will be getting the first phone call and you will be getting the first interview to see if you're interested. And, and it's, it's something that is needed for Nipawa and the surrounding area. 48 suites, it's going to be a boon to the community and uh, very much looking forward to seeing how this building continues to grow. I mean, it's, uh, it's already up on the second floor, I believe, right now. So maybe even the third floor as we're speaking right now. It's really just sort of plopping right up. It's like a, it's like a really big game of Jenga. Yes. <laughs> okay, hopefully it's not like how Jenga ends, though, where it just comes crashing down. Yeah, no, that, that wouldn't be good. That wasn't the so... best example on my part. <laughs> <laughs> it's fitting together like that. It won't turn out like that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, it's... Uh, it, it is good to see some of that work going on. So you can see that story that starts on page two, continues on to another page. I don't remember the number right now, but once you pick up your hard copy of the Banner and Press, you know, you can flip through and you'll be able to find it for yourself. It's in there somewhere. I really don't want to go into this one. We talk about COVID-19 every single week. But I think maybe, Casper, maybe we do need to talk about it for a few minutes because there are some new revelations and there are some new details about what's happening in the province. Uh, on the front page, just on the side there, we have an update on the uh, 
restrictions for COVID-19. Um, the restrictions we've been dealing with for the past four weeks, we will be dealing with for another four weeks. That's the reality of it. Um, that means Christmas, as we know it, for a lot of us, is not going to be the same this year. Um, Casper, in terms of how this affects your family, your friends, wh whatnot, how, l let me get your perspective. How does this sort of, what does this mean for you and your family? Uh, well, for me and my family, we occasionally do go to Saskatchewan. We have a lot of family out there uh, on my dad's side. Uh, I mean, we were invited to go out there this year, but of course, you know, for safety's sake, we, we did refuse. But of course, we can't do that now anyway. Um, so we're, we're affected in that sense, but uh, most of the time we do just stay at the house. So I think we're going to be fine. Um, we only have one of my siblings that's not in the household, so I don't think that she'll be able to visit. But for the most part, we're, I think we're going to be okay. Um, I guess one other thing that is different for us, which isn't necessarily related to, to the restrictions, I guess in part, uh, is that uh, I do have a grandma in a care home and Brandon, uh, who had tested positive for, for COVID. She's doing well, uh, but you know, we won't be able to see her in the usual sense this year. So that does kind of suck, but it's, it's understandable and we're doing, you know, what we can. Yeah, I mean, the uncertainty of it all, the fear of, of, of a loved one having to go through it as well. It's so much stress that's being put on everybody right mm -hmm. now. And I'll be honest with you, I, I won't mince words. I'm pissed off. Pardon my language. Uh, and it's for selfish reasons a little bit. My parents live down the road in Brandon. They're both still healthy, still alive, thank God. But I can't visit them this year for Christmas. And that does tick me off. Last year, the entire family was together. Parents, my brother, sister-in-law, the kids, we were all together. It was the first Christmas in several years because they live in the United States on the West Coast, so it's, it's a little harder to see everybody at Christmas. And they were able to celebrate that, and they loved it. You know, we're Irish, so we don't acknowledge these types of things. We don't, Irish, for the most part, just sort of keep it in, but you could tell, you could really tell it meant something to them. And this year, they can't even see me. And that pisses me off. I'm, but I understand the reasoning behind it. I understand the rationale behind it. And again, my father and mother raised me to follow the rules, to tr always try to do the right thing. So I could very easily just skirt the rules. I could very easily just drive down the Brandon and just, you know, at dusk or dawn, when things are dark, just knock on the door, walk in there and just, but we're not going to do that because it's the right thing to do. Because following the rules on this situation um, is what we need to do. So uh, we're gonna give up Christmas now. So we can have Christmas next year, and the year before. And hopefully the year before, or the year after, and the year after that. And I sincerely hope that you are going to do the same. I'm sacrificing and I don't like it I'm being selfless right now so I can be selfish next year. And I hope all of you have that same mindset moving forward. You know, I'm, all right, I'm going to get off my, I'm going to get off my soapbox <laughs> right now. So, but that's, that's the update from the province. We also have some other information from the province in regard to the situation with COVID-19. They're putting more money into care home costs which is a good idea. I mean, it's been so expensive for all the care homes in Manitoba to have to deal with COVID-19 this year. We also got some numbers here in terms of the enforcement fines and the numbers of COVID cases in Prairie Mountain Health, our region. We were talking about this in the back. Uh, Kira, yourself, myself, 
Diane the other day about how the numbers for Prairie Mountain Health just consistently seem to be dropping off and that's a that's a very positive sign I think don't you? Absolutely it's a very good thing to see because uh, we were looking back at the numbers it's like I remember when we were freaking out about this number and compared to now like of course you know it's a serious thing uh, and we don't take it lightly but it'd be like one five you know six and now like it was like 500 or almost 600 and now it's seen that number yeah. come down as big as it still is and you know those numbers are people it's not just numbers yeah it is a relief to see them coming down ever so slowly but surely <laughs> as of as of yesterday as of recording right now and these numbers are fluid they will change but 194 active cases in the prairie mountain health region and it is a huge region it's from swan river all the way down to the u.s border so th the fact that we have reached that point is very positive it's because we as a collective have been trying to do the right thing and that's very commendable and hopefully this next week's show will be able to say oh it's eight you know we got eight left you know or something like that um and again, for white mud, which is Nipua proper and some of the surrounding area, we got only three right now, three active cases. So even though the restrictions are a little difficult to deal with, I think they're working. Obviously, not so much maybe in Winnipeg, but again, that's a, that's a, bigger, that's a bigger bunch of people. They got a little less elbow room than we got out here, don't they? Yeah, we're not, we're not sort of elbowing people as we try and eat so to speak so yeah that's that's good and you know just with how the winnipeg situation was handled earlier on it is of course going to be more difficult to rein that in as well that is certainly a factor but you know we're doing good it's starting to you know get handled a bit better here mm -hmm. so you know hopefully these restrictions uh, as necessary as they are uh that's the reason uh, that the numbers are going down. You know, we don't really know how exactly this works entirely. Uh, and, you know, these, these measures, whether they're working or, you know, it's partially working or whatever, it's, you know, there's something's, something's happening and mm -hmm. the numbers are coming down, so. Yeah, speaking of some of the restrictions and some of the guidelines that are going forward and continue to go forward, there are some changes you've most likely heard about when it comes to learning, remote learning as well in uh, schools. Uh, Kira Patterson did a story on that, uh, outlining exactly how the school divisions are going to be dealing with the remote learning once it comes into effect in January. I mean, this is some changes, uh, but they've had to deal with it before. They were dealing with something very similar in the spring. So a lot of the divisions, our local divisions, say that they are feeling confident about being able to handle it. Well, let, me, let, let me ask you your opinion on that. Uh, I, I don't have any kids, but I, I've heard from people who have kids that they're a little antsy, but they're feeling optimistic still. What, what about you? What is your takeaway on, do you think they'll be able to handle the job of remote learning? Uh, so I can go around, I believe so. Uh, they did pretty good uh, uh, from what I remember the first go around. They know a bit more now uh, and they've clearly been thinking about it. So I think they'll be pretty well prepared for that. Uh, uh, they'll know how to sort of fix any kinks uh, that they might have come across before a bit easier now. Um, you know, it's personally for me, it's good to see that they are pursuing remote learning again. Uh, just because it helps decrease the risk of uh, COVID exposures in the school. Uh, I know it's not the best option for, for some people, and it is hard to have your kids at home when you're supposed to be trying to work, but hopefully for the most part, it's, you know, kids at ages that uh, they are able to easily stay home because, you know, they know how to take care of themselves uh, if they need to. Um, yeah, I just, I can only really hope that uh, that turns out well. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want a little more information on that, Kira definitely goes in depth and discusses that, uh, some of the perspective on that. You can find that on page 13 of this week's edition of the Banner and Press. It's a very good write-up, sort of explains how it's uh, going to play out. Lights, light up Nipawa, lights up Nipawa. Nipawa, lighten up. <laughs> it's all these things and none all at once. But you got some details on a very special thing that's uh, 
that's trying to take place. Talk to us about Light Up Nipawa, Casper. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I didn't get to, too creative with the headline there because I was trying to come up with different things and they all just sort of had funky connotations to them. So yeah. <laughs> went really simple and just said that towns invite residents to light up their communities. Uh, first, want to start off off the bat there, uh, as Nipah mentioned, or as Nipah mentioned, as Owen mentioned, sorry, uh, is light up Nipah, and uh, the town really uh, set up their lights on November twelfth, and they want to encourage people to just add some cheer to the community uh, with COVID nineteen going on, and uh, uh, just makes the holiday season bright, a bit brighter than. Uh, uh, usual years just to sort of, you know, give give something, uh, give people something to smile about. That's a uh, nice idea. <laughs> I really do like the concept of it. And they did something similar to that in the spring for a shorter period of time. And I thought it went over really well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're going to be leaving up their decorations until March, which to me is just like, oh my God, really? Yeah. But And I do that anyway. <laughs> You can forget to take your decorations down for a while, and you can just say, oh, yeah, I, I did this. It's, yeah. it's totally cool. I planned it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm helping the community. I'm not lazy. <laughs> I promise. <I'm> <laughs> uh, so they're encouraging people to participate in that, uh, uh, for people to take pictures afterwards and post them with some hashtags, which you can see in the story there. Uh, and, you know, Encourage people to go out, take a walk with their families, of course, be mindful of uh, COVID-19 health and safety regulations uh, while you're doing that. And uh, another town as well, Carberry, is doing a similar event. And uh, there's a bit of an added uh, uh, incentive. Well, I guess that, that could give it a poor connotation, perhaps. But there's an added treat, I will say. Uh, that helps the community out in another sense as well. They are doing a contest in which you can uh, actually earn some prizes there, uh, which supports local businesses. Uh, people wanting to participate in the decorating uh, contest do have to register. Uh, so there's some contact information there. As well, that isn't the only way to win some prizes. You can do a scavenger hunt uh, for which they are going to be posting more details tomorrow, the 11th, depending when you're watching this. Hopefully you see it uh, as soon as we post it. And, uh, you know, it should just be a really good incentive for, for people to, you know, just have some fun. Fantastic. That's great. We only got a few minutes left right now, so we're quickly going to scan over one last story that you can check out. It's also on page 10 with Casper's story about Light Up Nipawa. It's about a potential change for the town of Nipawa. They're thinking of a slight rebranding. Uh, the logo uh, that the town uses on pretty much everything, uh, the cornucopia, a little wave thing, a little very thin font on it. They're thinking about changing it to transition it to something similar to what's being used in Nipawa tourism, but they want your opinion on it. Uh, they've got some information up on their social media. Uh, you can also contact them and uh, share your opinion on it. Uh, a lot of people, e including people from Alberta apparently, uh, are chiming in on Nipawa and saying they like the old one. Uh, I like elements of the old one myself. I think it is due for a slight refresh, but the cornucopia is the one thing that everybody seems to agree on. Um, I, 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 but you can check that out. Uh, I think we are running very low on time right now, so uh, unfortunately sort of that's all we can share with you on that right now. That's why you got to pick up a hard copy of the paper. And uh, definitely, it's, uh, it's a good one this week, I think. A lot of good information on there. Um, and if you have any suggestions for us, you can contact us at news at nipawabanner.com for any story ideas, any suggestions, or you can call us at 476-3401, um, ads at nipawabanner.com as well. Always appreciated. Um, so. That's about it for uh, us here today. Casper, I want to thank you very much for sitting in and, and just uh, putting in the, the work this week. I mean, a bunch of really great stories. I'm, I'm glad that you and, and we as a collective were able to share with the public this week. Great. Thank you, and absolutely. It's always a pleasure to sit in here. And of course, you know, as we say, there's only so much we can cover in this time, so do be sure to pick up a hard copy as a paper. 
and we thank you as well for tuning in, for picking up hard copies of the paper, and we'll talk to you again next week on the next edition of the story behind the stories.